Well, it is Father's Day. Fathers, make sure you get your donut, get your sh sugar quotient on the way out or the way in. They're out there. We're so glad for fathers. Uh, I want to talk to you about the blessing. We sang about it. And much of the words that are a blessing to us come from Deuteronomy chapter 28. So I'm going to ask you to turn there in your Bible because I'll be reading shortly from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. We just sang some of Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I will be sharing with you about Deuteronomy 28. It is all about the blessing and the curse. And so before I do that, though, I want to tell you a little bit about what happened to me personally on the trip, and it relates perfectly uh, to this message and what's going on this morning here at Father's Day. I've known Jonathan Ferrant for a long, long time, and we were, seated, we were seated at K59. That's the impact center, the place where we actually stayed, where we were housed. It's right on the beach. It's absolutely beautiful. The Lord dropped it into their lap about 15 years ago. Someone gave them some anonymous donor gave them $100,000. They purchased it. He's had three people offer him a million dollars a piece for this piece of property. It is beautiful. Uh, they're opening up for a, a pastor's kids retreat here in the next couple of weeks. It's really exciting. We were seated there at K59. That's what it's called. Uh, sipping coffee and we were talking about ministry stuff and things that God has done through us. And I know Jonathan's story. He has a very tragic story, but also a very triumphant story of the grace of God. When Jonathan was 17 years old, he lost his father and his brother in a diving accident. They dove down into some caves. And at 17 years old, that was the last time that Jonathan saw his father. Well, his father had broken, listen to this, the generational curses of alcoholics in his family. Jonathan, Jonathan's father did by turning his life over to Jesus Christ. And he changed everything. The family was an alcoholic, and now this man had given his life to the country of Guatemala and was raising up his boys in the fear and admonition of the Lord that they too would become missionaries. And Jonathan's dad became a sort of legend in the area because he opened up all these doors for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, Jonathan loses the center of the family. The family was never the same, and he lost his brother in the same time, at the same time. So if you've been around this church any time at all, you know that in that place, Jonathan and I's story kind of intertwine. I lost my dad. He was murdered by a person he was trying to help that was living in his house. And so we talked a little bit about that. And so Jonathan went on to say, I believe that I'm walking in the blessing of, of my father and what he did on the mission field, this camp that God just dropped in our lap, the mission that is so a part of my life, that blessing of seeing souls come to Jesus Christ, it is something that my dad paved the way for. I'm literally walking in the coattails of my dad's blessing. And then again, Jonathan and I, I felt like there was something there that God did in that divine moment because I've said the same thing to my wife. Not even two years ago, here at the altar, right here at the altar, I was praying and, and God confirmed to me that some of the promises that he had made to my father were going to come to pass as the pastor of this church. And I'm just walking in the promises that he believed in, that I'm going to walk in the inheritance and the blessing that my dad believed until his dying breath. So Jonathan and I both had this tragic and this triumphant kind of thread going in our relationship and it's all about the father's blessing the father's blessing fathers i need to let you know this morning that what you speak out of your mouth can either loose the destiny of your children or it can bind them up to the ways of the past deuteronomy 28 talks about how we can be blessed i'm going to read in a moment but it also says that we can be cursed and out of our mouth, James chapter 1 tells us that we should not let blessing and cursing happen. Amen? You can't be a mixed well. It's got to be either blessing or cursing. You can't bless in church and curse at home. It has to be blessing. But you, fathers, have authority to loose the blessing of God in your family's lives. Amen? Somebody say amen this morning. So much of what we say outside of church maybe 
could be negative, that could reverse the blessing. I was really blown away because I've read Deuteronomy 28 many times that the cursing involves not only your business, it involves your relationships. If you curse with your mouth, you're cursing your kids' future relationships. Something else I didn't see before when I read Deuteronomy 28, if you curse your kids, they can struggle with mental illness. It's literally in the Bible that madness will come upon them. You wonder why we have so much dysfunction and hurt and brokenness because really we have emotionally absent, if not physically absent, fathers. And I know that some of us can't help that fact. We were a child that was raised up in our family. Maybe we're, you know, subject to divorce. We were a victim of divorce. Or maybe our, our father was lost suddenly, like mine and uh, Jonathan's was. But I'm telling you this morning, God can still lose a blessing, a fatherly blessing over your life. He's a father to the fatherless. How many of you all know what I'm talking about? He is a father to the fatherless. And just so you know scripturally where the Father's blessing comes in, the book of Genesis is ripe with fathers blessing their children. Isaac and Jacob and Abraham blessing their kids. And when a father would speak a blessing over his children, it many times was a word of encouragement. It detailed the inheritance, the actual material inheritance that that son would get when his father passed. And it also had prophetic utterances in it, prophetic words that spoke of the future of those children. So I just want to highlight Jacob, whose name was turned to Israel, who's the father of the nation of Israel. When he spoke over the 12 sons, I just want to highlight a couple of the sons and what happened. We all know the son Judah, right? Judah means praise. The prophetic word that Jacob spoke over Judah in Genesis 49 said that he would be the king over nations, that the obedience of the nations would happen from his line. Well, we know that King David was from the tribe of Judah, right? And eventually, Jesus Christ was from the tribe of Judah. So the obedience of the nations happened thousands of years later, and the prophetic fulfillment of that blessing that he spoke over his family one afternoon or one day came true thousands of years later in Jesus Christ. That's how supernaturally powerful a father's blessing is. And then I think about Issachar. This is the word that was spoken over Issachar. Jacob said to him, he saw, he saw that a resting place was good and that the land was pleasant. He spoke that word over Issachar. Who knew that when they crossed over into the promised land that he would get lower Galilee and the valley of Jezreel, which is a very um, productive and fruitful and fertile valley, and so he inherited that blessing. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years later. And then Jacob's youngest son, Benjamin, he spoke a blessing over him, and this is what he said to Benjamin. How would you like this for a blessing? Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. And in the morning, devouring and pray, the prey, and at evening, dividing the spoil. You may wonder what that means. But out of the tribe of Benjamin, so many mighty warriors were raised up in Israel. The mighty men of valor, many of them were from the tribe of Benjamin. Jonathan and Saul were from the tribe of Benjamin, these warlike individuals that were raised up. And so that prophetic word that Jacob spoke over Benjamin actually came true. I want you to know this morning, fathers, that you have the power to bring forth the destiny of your families, your wife, your children, and anyone that you put under your wing as a disciple, if you call them a spiritual son or daughter, you can speak destiny and your words are super powerful in Christ. I'm going to geek out just for a minute. Everybody look at me. Everybody knows I like science, right? Wave at me if you give me permission for about three minutes to geek out here. You know, science is getting so, so good that they're beginning to see the connections between the spirit and the soul. You may not know this. I'm going to go through this fast. I could say a lot more. 
Both your brain and your heart release electromagnetic pulses. That's what keeps you alive, all right? These electromagnetic pulses, they regulate the higher functions of your DNA. If you're stressed out, if you're anxious, if you're fearful, literally, you inhibit your body's ability to repair and refresh its own DNA. You are literally rewriting your DNA when stress, anxiety, and fear take over your life because that same, that same power, that same electromagnetic pulse is meant to repair your body instead of combating stress. It is a proven scientific fact that from the heart, this is what they say, this is not in the Bible, this is what scientists say, that if you have feelings of love, acceptance, forgiveness, and not unforgiveness, that literally your DNA unwinds a little and relaxes. And your body can do exactly what it's meant to do, and that is to repair and refresh its own DNA. You will shorten your life with stress, anxiety, and fear. Here's another one. This is crazy. When I said that the scientists couldn't see the relation between um, the spirit and the soul, listen to this. This may blow your mind a little bit. And scientists are looking at this and they're thinking to themselves, what in the world is going on? There's something deeper than physics, the law of physics, which we believe is fun fundamental. It's the basis of everything. Look, this is crazy. I know it's going to sound crazy. But when you look at something, they've measured this, it literally changes its properties when you look at something. The fact that you're looking at it, have you all ever heard the old adage when a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to listen to it? Is, did it really fall or did, did it make a sound? Hear what I'm saying. When you look at it, the light, actually the photons, it's measured, it's proven fact, actually change. So scientists are saying, well, maybe gravity isn't, and physics is not the basis for reality. Maybe there's something deeper because the light, which is reflecting what you see back to your eyes, actually changes when you look at it and when you look away. It, man, I'm telling you, there's something deeper. There's a spirit to everything we're doing. It's affecting our own bodies. And not only can it affect our own bodies, it can affect how we see things. It can affect our futures. Man, science is beginning to tap into this. If you have anxiety, fear, and doubt, you can change your very destiny. You can shorten your life. And if you speak anxiety, fear, and doubt into other people, you're not helping them. The way that you see things literally changes what you see. This is a scientific fact. Man, if we have the Spirit of God, hear what I'm saying right now, and we speak from the unction of the Spirit of God over our families and over our children, we're literally going to change their DNA. We can change the direction and destiny of their life, and we can change the way that they see the future. Scientists are tapping into this. That wasn't too bad of a geek out, was it? Y'all with me still? It's like, oh gosh, I'm in science class. Oh, we could have went deeper, but we're going to leave it alone. <laughs> so, so that brings me to a scripture. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. I'm just going to read two verses. Now, this entire chapter is, if you do this, you're going to be blessed, and if you don't, you're going to be cursed. And I invite you to read the entire chapter, honestly. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 2. Look at this. Now it shall be, if you diligently obey the Lord your God, be careful to do all his commandments, which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. All, listen, this is the key, all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. It says there that he would set you above the nations in this blessing, and we sang it in the song, you're to be the head and not the tail, above and never beneath. That doesn't mean that you're always kicking on all cylinders and everything's great and rosy and sunshine all the time. It just means positionally God has placed you in, a, in, in that place, that seat where you are above and not beneath. It says that he has seated you. He wants to seat you at his table. He set you above. That means he has seated you at his table. And in Ephesians, it says this, 
that all of the blessings in heavenly places are yours in Christ Jesus. You know the reason why we say, ah, 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 amen? That means so be it. Let the blessing come upon you, so be it. When we say amen, we're saying so be it. How many of y'all wouldn't mind if you were seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places and all spiritual blessings were yours in Christ Jesus and you were seated above the nations in a sense because you're a child of God. How many of y'all enjoy your position? Come on this morning and you, it doesn't bother you one bit that you're blessed. You see, you're hooked up to someone who's a joint heir. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ won every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. When he both died, was buried, and resurrected, and ascended to the right hand of God, he's got all the stuff. And we are joint heirs with him this morning. You got it all coming to you, not based on your merit, not based on your, your righteousness, based on Jesus Christ. You have it all coming to you. Tell yourself, I've got it all. I've got all of heaven's blessings coming to me. Come on, say it to yourself. I've got all of heaven's blessings coming to me. Jesus won it for me. Some of y'all are going to get it down into your spirit. You're blessed when you go out, and you're blessed when you come in. You're blessed in the country, and you're blessed in the city. Someone who knows that they're blessed just walks a little bit different, acts a little bit different, talks a little bit different. When I knew I was a teacher's pet or I knew I was teacher's favorite in a class, I knew I could go and ask for things. Why don't we watch a movie today? Why don't we ask the teacher a question about their personal life so they talk all day and we don't do any schoolwork? If you're the favorite, you go forth with that confidence. Folks, we need to change our perspective that we're a sinner just saved by grace. No, we are clothed in the name of Jesus. When we come in the name of Jesus, we don't come in our own merit. We don't come in our own righteousness. We're not a poor, filthy sinner anymore. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And we come in the name above every name. And all of heaven's riches are ours. But verse 2 is the one that is the clincher for me. All, all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Yes. It's one thing to have the blessing of God come upon you. I mean, it's great. When you lift up your hands and you realize your sins are forgiven and God has cleansed you and expunged you from all sin and unrighteousness. Come on, somebody, that's a blessing. When you lift up your hands and you realize that the Holy Spirit is yours, and you are the Holy Spirit's, come on, how many of y'all know that's a blessing? When the blessing comes upon you. Are you blessed? Do you know that? When the blessing comes upon you? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about right now? But it's quite another thing when the blessing overtakes you. Jesse, come on up here. He did this with, I preached this on Father's Day, which was Thursday, some of this in El Salvador. All right, here you are. Aren't you good looking? This is you. This is you. This is Jess, by the way. You're walking along the street in your life. You're just doing your thing. Just go on down to the bottom of the stage and make a lap, man, right in front. You're just going down. Yeah, go on down. Right down here, over here. This is the front. It's this one. We're in a different stage. It's, you're doing good, man. You're doing good. I'm, your, I'm like the Holy Spirit. I'm encouraging you. You're doing great. Keep it up. And right on back. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> you're just walking through your life, doing your thing. You're going about your business. You're helping your family. You're serving God the best that you know how. But there's something chasing you down, buddy. There's something that's on your trail. It's the Holy Spirit of God. He not only wants his blessing to come upon you, but his blessing is going to chase you down, catch up to you, and overtake you. Overtake you. You did awesome, Jess. Get ready for the second service. All right. 
I'm telling you. I'm about ready to be overtaken by the blessing of God. It wouldn't hurt my feelings one bit if it chased me down, hunt me down, came after me and pursued me until it overtook me. I think it's about time some people in the sea coast saw some Christians that weren't defeated, mully grubbing, complaining all the time, but Christians that had the blessing of God overtake their life and say, so they got joy unspeakable and full of glory. They're an overcomer. They're above and not beneath. Folks, it's time to get out of the mully grubs. It's time to get out of me, oh my, oh. It's time for us to get out of self-pity. Listen, my mentor, Pastor Scott, used to say this. Some of y'all got this little guy on his shoulder. His name is self-pity. And he tells you, hey, nobody's got a family like yours. You have a good reason to be the way that you are. Listen, that spirit is not your friend. Man, you got it so bad this job, you hate your job, it's so bad you're the only one that has ever had to struggle with not loving their job. Man, you've got it so bad. Listen, the spirit of self-pity is not your friend. The spirit of self-pity would whisper to you and tell you, you're no good, you're nothing in the kingdom, you don't have any worth. There's no reason for you to even be here that you're not doing anything important. You don't compare to these people and those people that have these gifts and these looks or that ability and that talent. Listen, the, self, the spirit of self-pity is not your friend. I'm here to tell you this morning that the spirit of God wants to overtake you with blessings. Again, I'm just gonna ask you, would you mind one little bit if the blessing of God overtook you. If I'd have told you you had a winning lotto ticket, some of y'all went screaming home and telling your friends, how many of y'all don't mind if you're blessed this morning? Come on. <laughs> Listen, your troubles will try to track you down. I mean, it sounds or feels like trouble's trying to sniff your path, man, and track you down. In some people's life, they've been hit with so many different troubles. It's like, what is this thing that's trying to ruin my life and make me focus on my troubles? And all of a sudden, we build this expectancy of the next trouble that's coming to our life. Your pain. Your pain has tried to wear you down. You're going through life and you're carrying this boulder on your back of things that were done to you and it's trying to wear you down. Every step is so labored because of the boulder of pain. Listen, you didn't deserve it, but still pain is trying to wear you down. Heartache is trying to take you down. All of us have hurts. All of us have had people say stuff to us that was not kind. And in those words, the devil will often afflict our soul with thorns that try to take us down. And the enemy, listen, he goes about as a prowling lion, a roaring lion, seeking someone he can destroy. The devil is trying to hunt you down. So when your troubles try to track you down and your pain tries to wear you down and your heart, heartache tries to take you down and the enemy tries to hunt you down, I want to say it with everything inside of me, but the blessing of God in your life, right? No matter what you face, no matter what's coming against you, no matter what's trying to weigh you down and encumber you this morning, I'm telling you, you are blessed. The blessing, the blessing. Listen, your troubles are running after you, but the blessing's a little faster. Come on, it's catching up to you. It's going to overtake you. Man, I'll tell you what, the blessing of God will outrun your pain. I'm blessed. I don't know about you, but ever since I asked Jesus into my heart, I get up in the morning, and the most precious treasure, treasure in all of the cosmos in the entire universe the mercies of God are new every morning. 
I've been serving Jesus for almost 30 years, and let me just tell more than 30 years, let me just tell you something. Every sunrise, there is no lack of supply of the blessing of God. And I could have a million cattle on a thousand hills, and I could have everything that this world is offering me, but it wouldn't be a thimble full of treasure compared to the grace and mercy of God because if I don't have it in my soul, if I don't have contentment, and if I don't have contentment and I don't have peace in my soul, what does it matter? There isn't anything that the enemy can do that God can't outrun. Woo! And the blessings of God can't lap in your life. There isn't anything the world can throw at you that the blessing can't blow past. There isn't any pain that can slow down your blessing. It's running after you. I hope you can get this picture in your life. It's chasing you down, and it desires to overtake you. No matter who you are, what station of life you're in, there's a Father in heaven that wants to bless you. Any father... Any father with his children, any good father, tries to give, this is in the scripture, Jesus said this, tries to give good gifts to his children according to his sinful desire and his brokenness. He tries the best that he can. It's like the remnants of our heavenly father. But he is the father of lights where every good and perfect gift and no shadow of turning is in him. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights above. Doesn't matter what you've come from, what you've been through, that Father, our Father in heaven, wants to bless you. Get it down deep into your soul. I don't care what your earthly daddy, your earthly mommy did to you, what a church has done to you, what individuals have done to you. Don't let it skew your vision of the heavenly Father who wants to give gifts out. That's the way that it is. When my daughters were young, like three, five, and eight, I would tell people jokingly, but I found out it wasn't that big of a joke. I said, when they're 13, 15, and 18, and they're all teenagers, I'm going to be asking you for a loan. I'd say this to my friends and my family. Why? Because I knew my love for them would never withhold anything. If they asked it, and I felt like it was good for them, I would do it, right? Whatever they wanted. The Father wants to bless you. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You're a joint heir with him. And all spiritual blessings in heavenly places are yours, not the preacher, not the YouTube speaker, not the worship leader, not the great gigantic church. It's yours. It's yours this morning. Come on, church, stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. It was so obvious in El Salvador with a fatherless generation running around. Ben and I both are Loving fathers, it was crazy because these kids stick to you like glue. They so need a father's blessing. We have so much brokenness in northern New England. Listen to what I'm saying. 60% of the marriages don't make it. Hear what I'm saying when I say this. Out of the remaining 40%, 80% of those people of the 40 are not happy. How are we going to pass down a blessing when 60% of the marriages are broken and 80% and of the remaining 40 are miserable living with one another? And so what this has created is either an absent father or an emotionally absent father. Emotional absenteeism of fathers in northern New England is an epidemic. You wonder why people are confused of what they are? Why they have gender confusion, why they have identity confusion, because the father is the one that speaks those things over their children, whether they be male or female. The brokenness is epidemic, folks. 
But again, there's hope in our Father in heaven. He's a father to the fatherless. And you may have had a good father. You may have had a great family. But what they gave to you in their faultiness, in their lack, even with good intention, cannot do what your heavenly father wants to do for you in this moment. So no matter how good a father you had, no matter how much your family tried to pour into you, there's always room for something for the heavenly father to pour into your life. How many of you all understand that? So we're going to pray about that. We're going to all just open up ourselves before the Lord and say, God, hit me with everything you've got. I want all the peace, love, joy. I want all the spiritual strength that I can get. Here I am as your, as your son or your daughter. God, just bless me going in and coming out. I mean, I want the blessing of God to ride so heavy on me. People bump into me and all they're getting is blessings, man. <laughs> and then fathers, we cannot shirk our responsibility. We are the ones that can control partially the destiny of our families and our children. So we're going to pray over fathers, okay, too. First of all, all of us, just like little children, man, like a three- or five-year-old child, man, God, I want a cookie from heaven, amen. I, I want you to bless me. Let's just raise our hands right now and let our heart right here, the middle of you, let your heart now be open. Let your heart receive. Let your heart be tender in this moment. Your heavenly Father so wants to bless you. He wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. I'm telling you this this morning. He wants to pour into your life. He wants to impart into your life. He wants to bless you so much that it'll pursue you and chase you and take you over. Come on, lift up those hands. If you know that your heavenly Father is that good, and even if you didn't know he's that good, he's that good. Come on, lift up those hands. Father, I thank you right now that we are blessed yes. with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Everything that Jesus won is ours, it's ours, it's yes and amen. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. God, would you lavish right now, would you lavish your blessings on your people? Pour out from heaven on open hearts right now. God, I thank you for the peace that passes understanding. It would guard the hearts and minds of people in this sanctuary right now. There'd be more peace than they've ever experienced. Peace where peace left off. Peace in abundance. Peace overflowing. Peace running over in their life. God, I thank you for joy unexplainable and full of glory. The joy of the Lord is your strength and God is the endless fountain of joy and right now that river is running straight through your soul. Thank you, God, that that river will overrun its banks, that it will take over areas of pain and hurt and lack and neglect and even abuse. Father, I thank you right now that joy is filling every gap, every chasm, every hole, God, every place inside of us that's lacking. God, I thank you that the blessing right now is overtaking, overtaking our past, overtaking our hurt, overtaking our pain, God, flowing over the banks of our life. Not just a little dab will do you, but a mighty torrent, a mighty river, a current that sweeps away all prior things greater than what I've experienced, greater than what I've known, greater than what I've lacked. Jesus. Father, I thank you for joy unspeakable and full of glory. We, your children, God, we claim the blessing and we thank you that you've spoken it in your word and we can take it to the bank that we are above and never beneath, 
where the head and not the tail will be blessed when we go out and when we come in will be blessed when we go to the country or the city wherever we go we carry the blessing father i pray anything we put our hands to it won't be our own effort only it won't be our own work ethic only God, but I pray that you would add the extra to everything we do, the extra blessing, and may we give you the glory financially. God, I thank you right now. Blessing, 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 blessing. Relationally, I pray across the church, broken relationships in families right now would have a blessing of God upon them where they would not stay in that same place even though that person that you're fractured from or divided from, it might get worse. I pray that we would get better, that we would have so much joy, love, and peace that it would be the bond, the bond that would bring that relationship back together. God, right now in the area of relationships, blessed, 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 blessed. We're better at relationship. We're better, we're gonna be better. We're gonna be better, 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 better in relationships. You know, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says if we're not blessed, if we're cursed, that the, the heavens will be like brass. Your prayers will bounce off like a Super Bowl. That's what it says in the end of chapter 28. Come on, keep those hands up just a little bit longer. God, I pray right now that the heavens, that heaven's windows will be wide open. Just like the cool breeze that we receive into our house in the evenings in the summertime, God, I pray that heaven's windows would be flung open wide. Father, and the breeze of heaven would blow over our spirit. We wouldn't have heaven's brass. God, the heavens would open up over us. We'd be the traveling tabernacle, the pillar of fire, and the cloud would follow us around wherever we go. And our spirit would be blessed, blessed, blessed. Our prayers would be blessed. Our worship would be blessed. Our Bible reading would be blessed, 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 and blessed some more. Again, God, I thank you right now that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord who has Jesus as their Savior, has inherited all, all of heaven's blessings. Come on, right now, just pray with me. I receive, come on, say it with some confidence. I receive the blessing and all of the blessing that heaven has for me in Christ Jesus. They are yes and amen. Come on, receive it and give him a hand clap of praise. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Fathers, put your hands in the air if you're a father right now. Jesus, I thank you that fathers would step up to their place of authority. They would step up to their role. And they wouldn't say one thing coming out of the side of their mouth and another. God, but they would be fixated on the blessing that they can bring to their children, to their sons and their daughters that they can bring to their workplace, that they can bring to their marriage relationship. God, I thank you right now that men that are anointed by the Spirit of God have a creative power, just like you did when you created these worlds out of nothing, this universe out of nothing. God, I thank you right now as they speak for the destiny for their kids and for their family and for their wife and for their work. God, I thank you that you're blazing a path, Father, that cannot be done by man. It cannot be done by human effort. And you will receive all the glory. Let men right now rise up and walk in their role with boldness. In Jesus' name, you receive that, men. Say a hearty amen in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, throw up your hands and declare this with me. May your favor be upon me. And a thousand, listen, a thousand generations. Man, this isn't just patty cake. This isn't just us four and no more. This is a thousand generations that the righteousness can be visited to. Come on, lift up your hands and declare, hallelujah. 
May his favor be upon me. May his favor be upon me. Hallelujah. Come on, team, sing it. Hallelujah. Favor be upon you and a thousand thousand generations, hallelujah, and your family, and your children, and your children, come on, and the children, and in favor be upon 